Hello, all of you wonderful roof snap sketchers out there. Um, today, we want to talk about cornice returns and how, you know, they're an important part of the roof. You can see I'm zooming in on our example house today. Yes. Um, there are shingles on those cornice returns. There are. That's not always the case. Sometimes they're metal, sometimes there are other materials that you're not replacing, but when it does have shingles on the cornice returns, well, you probably want to draw those in to get accurate measurements in roof snap. Mm -hmm. And that's the topic of today's video. Uh, so here we get a pretty good idea of these two different uh, areas on these front facing gables mm -hmm. that have cornice returns. Let's hop right on over into Roof Snap, and we can see that we have sketched up the majority of this roof. It's a beautiful looking roof. Let's switch over to draw mode. All right. And zoom in on these front areas. The good thing about this one is we can actually see the continuation of the gutter mm -hmm. on those cornice returns to know exactly how long they are. Right. The depth of cornice returns can sometimes be a little tricky. Of course, if you're on site, you're going to be able to get an idea of if it's one foot, one and a half foot, two feet. Typically, they're about two feet up the rake. Mm -hmm. And we know that the pitch of these cornice returns is going to be the same pitch as these predominant slopes on the roof. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and draw in our first one. All right. Now, some people will start by drawing right off of an existing point. Okay. But it's much easier if you just draw a rectangle and move it into place. Draw a simple rectangle okay. and label it up. So let's go with eave across the front, rake up the right side, wall flashing across the back, step along the left side. Once we have it drawn, we can go into draw mode. If we want to right click, we can actually bring this right over. And we don't necessarily need to connect it. And Katrina, do you know the little trick, the little key button, the, the keypad button we can push to keep it from connecting to this point? Yes. So shift while you are readjusting lines yep. will turn off snapping. And you get a visual cue. You see when I press shift that the little circle goes away. Correct. Yeah. So hold the shift button and left click that into place. That means that it's not locked in. Now before I reposition all the rest of those, let's go ahead and put pitch in and you'll see why. I'm going to grab the 12. Put the 12 on there. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, 10. Grab the 10, put the 10 on there. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna go ahead and make our step wall and rake grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Based on the slope of the roof. So as we position this, we can move this one. I'm sorry, let's do the rake first. So let's move the eave up, put that in line. And I want to go one point, let's say 1.3 feet in. Okay. And for our purposes, we're going to leave the step wall just inside the valley because that step wall would never be beyond the valley. Right. It would be just inside the valley. So we'll call it right there. And then we can draw the other one exactly the same. So I'm going to do this one a little more quickly without as much narration. All right. <clears throat> it's a good thing you're not drawing it right over top of that rake line because we do still need to label that eave it makes it a little easier if it's not sitting right on top of another line that is correct and i'll go ahead and get the wall and the step and once you do the first one it's a lot easier because you'll be able to use 90 mode to line everything up uh, but i am going to go ahead and right click on that and hold the shift key to move it into place and then i'll just line everything else up accordingly now, our line lengths aren't the same yet until we go in and put the 10, 12 on that section. Mm -hmm. But you notice how we have double shading mm -hmm. because there is the section that is the cornice return and the roof slope above that hangs over top. Exactly. Now, we have two more in the front. And for the most part, they're going to have the same method to create them. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and we'll draw in two quick rectangles and then we'll just move them all into place. So I'm going to draw them both ahead of time now. Okay. And even before I label the lines, I'm going to jump into facets and put 10 on both of them. Oh, wait, but this is a 12. So we would want to double check while on site, make sure that we have the pitch of these accurately. Um, but since they are so tiny, mm -hmm. 
uh, the difference between a 10 and a 12 for our demonstration purposes won't be substantial. Mm -hmm. So I'll go ahead and leave them both as 10s, jump over into edges, label up the eaves, rakes on both sides, walls along the back, and steps down both sides. Now I'll go back into draw mode, right click on this corner, hold the shift key and move it into place, and then the rest of them I'll just go ahead and line up. And what do we say? 1.3 on the length of the rakes. Mm -hmm. And these we can move as close to the eaves as we want, we could even take them all the way over and line them up perfectly straight with the eaves. Right. And that's what I'll go ahead and do for these. And don't forget to hold the shift key when you move this point over top of that point. There we go. I'll go ahead and zoom all the way back out. There you go. So you can see the entire front of the house. And switch over into facets, and you can see the double shading and the 10-12 pitch on all four corners returns on the front of the house. Awesome. Thanks for showing us how to do that, Jason. No problem. And thank you for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.